Hi, this is David Clive from Deed Ventures. The first three minutes of this video will provide an aerial overview of the property, which will be followed by a detailed property review, ending with a purchase walkthrough. I hope you enjoy. Now I will begin a detailed property review and a walkthrough of our purchase process. From the property, it takes approximately 25 minutes to get to San Simon. And if you go a little bit west on the 10 from San Simon, it'll take you 40 minutes to get to Bowie, Arizona. Going the other direction on the 10, heading east, you can get to Animas, New Mexico in roughly an hour. Wilcox, Arizona is also about an hour away if you're going west. Benson, Arizona is about an hour and a half. Tucson is just a little over two hours, about two hours and 15 minutes. And if you head east, you can get to Las Cruces in about two and a half hours to two hours and 40 minutes. This is Google's travel guide for Cochise County, Arizona. As you can see, there are lots of activities on the map that are plotted out, and um, there is a lot to see and do. The property is located right here. It's kind of on the edge of the county, but you have Tombstone, which is uh, down here, Boot Hill, lots of old Wild West cowboy type activities. There is a lot of outdoor uh, exploration that can be done. One of the cooler things in the area um, is the Karchner State Caverns, and they're extremely impressive. Relatively close to the property is the Chiricahua National Monument, and this is an interesting area because it has many rock formations that stick up like chimneys or smokestacks and um, the natural erosion has just caused these rocks to stay in these positions. So 
it's a great place to go do outdoor exploring, hit up on the weekends, or if you're in Tucson, you can hit these sites on the way to the property. There's a lot to see and do in Tucson as well. Tucson is approximately two hours away from the property. One of the highlights of Tucson um, is the collection of museums that the city has. This, there is the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. Uh, it has the Pima Air and Space Museum, which is highly ranked with lots of aircraft and spacecraft on display. It has a zoo. You can go to the Suaro National Park. Suaros are the cacti that look like the Taco Bell logo or the old Taco Bell logo. There are lots of activities and things from the University of Arizona in Tucson and around Tucson. Now this is the climate for Tucson, which is fairly similar to the climate near the property. As you can see, the area is fairly dry with low chance of precipitation during most periods except for July and August where there are monsoons that come through. And the temperatures stay fairly warm with the winter being a balmy 64 for the high in December and January and a low of 41. In the summers it does get a bit hot. It gets uh, the average temperature here for the highs um, shows 98 for June and July and 96 for August. I will note that you know these are averages and temperatures can get a lot hotter and colder than these averages but this should give you a good idea of the general climate in the area. And we're slowly zooming in. That blue line there indicates the border between Arizona and New Mexico. And now you can see Tucson. Tucson is approximately two hours away from the property. You'll see some other yellow dots. Those are other properties I have for sale in the area and this yellow area is the property itself. Nearby, there are several large quarter sections of land that are being developed and used to grow uh, nut trees. So basically, the easiest way to get to the property is to go down Shoemaker or Patton Farms, and then down Ratliff Road, and then you take uh, a right to go south on this road, and you come down through here, and the first, so this area of road here is a half mile, this distance. The first eighth to a quarter of a mile had some shrubs that were growing near the road that were a little close so you might want to bring something to trim these bushes right through here and here is where it's the the thickest and then after that it pretty much opens up and it's a little easier to drive on here are a couple of photos of the road we tried to get photos where the road was at its worst so here you can see some bushes that are overgrowing the road and in the second shot here you can see uh, this is about the roughest the road got um, to the, get to the property So, once you get down to the property, you have a half mile that is fronting on uh, this dirt road. And there's also kind of a trail over here, but it basically dies down um, that, that wood front on this quarter mile area. Uh, and then down at the southern tip, uh, there is this road here. I'm not sure if my map's a little bit off or if the road's a little bit off, but um, basically you have uh, a, a road that's to the south of the, uh, the property as well. Here we're zoomed out a little bit from the property. This vertical orange line here is actually the state boundary between Arizona and New Mexico. And um, the orange shaded areas are BLM land. The blue shaded areas are Arizona state land. The green shared, shaded areas are um, National Forest Service. So the property is located right here where um, you see this blue and orange meeting. And if we zoom in, you'll see here's the property. And it has Arizona state land on the west side 
and otherwise it's surrounded by BLM land all around. Um, each of these squares is approximately 40 acres. The grand total is uh, roughly 120, I think it's about 118 acres. Um, if we look at this with a topographical map, you can see that the property is fairly flat. Um, each of these lines represents a seven and a half foot increment. So uh, the elevation here is seven and a half feet lower than it is here, and then again, seven and a half feet here. Um, and as you can see, there, there is a line here indicating that there is uh, occasionally a wash that runs through here, um, though from satellite feeds, it is less obvious. Here's the line where that wash goes through the property on a satellite feed. As you can see in this topographical map, there are roads shown. These are dirt roads, uh, that's why they're dashed lines. And there is a road that goes down to the property. The road is um, not super well maintained. And uh, the road is split between state land and BLM land up here. As far as access goes, on the BLM side, the BLM allows you to drive vehicles on roads as long as you're not doing anything invasive or damaging. And on the Arizona side, they require a uh, recreational permit or a right-of-way, which is basically an easement that you can get. Uh, the permit is very easy to apply for and allows individuals to go on to Arizona land. There are several different levels of easement or right-of-way that you can get with Arizona State and each of those levels has a different degree of requirements and timeline uh, in terms of completing the process. But the property is fairly accessible. The one thing I would note is that there is half a mile here to get down to the property and the first quarter mile or maybe a little less than a quarter mile there is uh, the, the shrubs on the side of the road have grown in a little bit and so you might want to bring some clippers or something to trim them down. I drove in a little ways, parked my car and then just walked uh, to the property so I didn't scrape the sides of my car because I didn't have uh, anything to clip the, the bushes with. This is the website for the Arizona Well Registry and I'll have a link to this website in the product page. As you can see here there are lots of wells near the property. The property is located uh, approximately right here. And you can pull up these wells to see um, what the depths are. If you go to construction, you can see that the water level for this well is 145 feet. Feel free to go on this website and explore it for yourself. To purchase this property or to hold the property, uh, all you have to do is scroll down to the section of the property page labeled Purchase Options, and there you will see the different prices and options available for purchasing the property. In this case, you have the cash price and several financing options that are available. If you want to purchase the property using any of these options, uh, you can follow these instructions down below the first step is to copy the checkout code. If I wanted to purchase it with the cash price, I would copy the checkout code. I would click the Buy Now Deposit. And that would take me to this page here with Rerun, which is our payment gateway partner. And here you would sign up for a new account. And you would place first name here, last name here, email address, and create a password and then click sign up. Then you'll be asked for your billing details and you'll also see down here at the bottom the property checkout code. This is where you'll want to paste in that checkout code that we copied before and fill in your various billing details. You'll go through the process uh, completing your user information 
you'll be taken to an order summary page that will show you the purchase that you have selected, which is just a deposit. And then you'll select a payment method. We accept credit card, debit card, or ACH transfer online. Also, you can reach out to us at sales at deedventures.com and arrange for payment via check, cashier's check, or money order, or wire. Finally, you'll be taken to the end and we'll reach out to you to ensure we have the proper information to document the transaction and we will coordinate with you to get all the documents completed and signed. As you can see here, below the Buy Now button, we outlay the purchase process. You simply copy the checkout code of the purchase option you want. Once you complete the checkout process, the non-refundable deposit will hold the property and it will also count toward the purchase price or the down payment amount of the property purchase. We will then send a simple agreement for you to sign which will put the property under contract. The remaining balance can be paid by wire transfer, ACH, credit card, debit card, or cashier's check. Once all the payments are received, the deed and the necessary transfer documentation will be completed and filed with the county and mailed to the address that you provide us. In this instance, we will also pay for a title insurance policy, which will be issued to you as the new owner. If you have any questions about the purchase process, the deposit, or the documentation process, feel free to reach us by email or by phone. Our contact info is listed at the bottom of each page. And with that, I'll leave you with some photos of the property.